From I'm Actually to Here Contractually, Mike Trapp has a lot of responsibilities, and today he's a contestant. You're watching Um Actually. And on this special Switcheroo episode, I'm your host, Ify Wadiway. And joining us on the, Sorry. <laughs> Not as easy as it looks. <laughs> <laughs> and on this special episode, the Switcheroo episode, I'm your host, Ify Wadi Way. And joining us today, these wonderful guests, we have Zach Oyama. What's up? Haley Mancini. Let's play the game. And none other than my arch nemesis, Mike Trapp. <gasps> hey, I'm on the wrong side of the table. How did this happen? <laughs> Now, Give me the, my desk. I, I gotta be honest, I feel like Trap's also my arch nemesis. Yeah, yeah. I think he's everyone here's arch nemesis. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> That's why you're never invited to the no mic trap club <laughs> party. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but there's that been... other one mic trap. Yeah, we can have one. <laughs> no, I'm super excited. This is gonna be super fun. And you know, I'm, I can look at no other folks I'd want to do this with, especially Mike. Very excited to see you in the hosting chair here, Ify. Yeah. I'm very excited to be here now i get to feel this power all the episodes where you've snatched points right from my grasp as they fell from my fingers uh you know ruining my undefeated streak uh making me lose in the tournament of champions all those things i will proceed forward unbiased though sounds like maybe you're putting too much agency on me and maybe 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 you know there's some a little blame to be shared here but uh but I'll, you're I'll so cool that. in that t-shirt huh yeah. <laughs> you know, you have a on now you're just a regular guy yeah. Zach, I am well. I am literally very cool in this t-shirt. Like, <laughs> this room gets very hot, and I nothing's making me happy right now to not that, be wearing a blazer and a long shirt. Does that t-shirt have vents? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, as as someone wearing a blazer, I will admit uh, the coolness I normally have on this show has uh, flipped, and I am the hot one. Uh, <laughs> in the hot seat. Oh, yeah. Well, uh, as you all know, the game is very simple. I have here a stack of statements. These are incorrect statements about things that people know and love, and it's up to you to find the things wrong, buzz in, and correct me. There is one rule. All your corrections must be preceded with the phrase, um, actually, and you can interrupt me whenever you want. I'm hoping I don't forget to say, um, actually. I think that would be the, I think worse than getting like no points because I'm not totally expecting to be able to do very well at this, but I do just, I want to be able to remember to, to actually abide by the own rules that I've created. Uh, <laughs> oh, oh yeah, that's, I, that's I, I don't worry. You you forget to say it. I will relish <laughs> and remember every time you snatched a point from my grasp until <laughs> you, and you <laughs> forgot to say them actually. First question is about Ultra Mechatron Team oh, Go. This is Fair. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Look at his shirt right now. Ultra Mechatron Team Go saw a group of neurotic young adults piloting an enormous mech to defeat strange monsters. But in Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, the mysterious Zordon specifically orders Alpha to recruit brave high schoolers. Oh yeah, that's the Haley. That that is you. You buzzed in. Oh, yep. Um, actually, isn't it like Zerg? No, no, his name is definitely uh, Zordon. You might. Yeah, well. <laughs> you know I'm, I'm actually. I'm gonna take a guess here. I'm gonna. I'm gonna fucking go for it. All right. Uh, uh, um, actually, he doesn't specifically order them to get high schoolers. He asks them for some. Some there's some other like test other things. Like he's looking for just like brave heroes or something, and they just happen to be high schoolers. You are so close, and you've you. They're in the past. This is how I've gotten some points. You've told me how <laughs> some was. And in those moments, though, you almost strip it away by saying things like, if someone can figure out exactly mm -hmm. the correct phrase oh. used to find the high schoolers. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, it looks like Haley. Um, Actually, he didn't, I said, didn't even say brave. It just said find young people. <laughs> That's incorrect. <laughs> Zach, you were on guess. so creepy. <laughs> Alpha, <laughs> bring me young people. He specifically asked for like Navy SEALs or something and, uh, and Alpha just went and got some fucking high schoolers who's a dumbass <laughs> robot. Incorrect. So I'm going to give it to Mike Trapp for the first point on the board. Zordon specifically orders Alpha to recruit teenagers with attitude. <laughs> Zordon, you're a fucking creep. Yeah. How is that different than mine? Yeah, yours got pretty close. I thought you were going to get it. But yeah, it does feel weird that this old man in a robe <laughs> is like, find me some teenagers with attitude, please. I'll be in my chambers. I've never seen Bring a them job to me. Thing. <laughs> 
that is specifically <laughs> looking for teenagers with attitude. Like that, that, would, that would be, if you ask me like, what's your greatest fault when I was getting like my first job, I'd be like, probably I'm a teenager with an attitude. Like that's a bad thing you don't want. <laughs> what kind of attitude are you looking for? Like good or bad? No, just yeah. attitude. These teenagers, D-G-A-F, okay? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, let's move on to the next question. Uh, I, you know, I love the banter. I love it. And I feel like Matt cut. Uh, I called Mike Matt. I feel. I feel um, like actually, Mike. he's Mike. Can I get uh, one? You know what? Yeah, I'll give you a point for that. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give you a point for that. That's my point. name. Yeah, you know, just to tie it. So now Mike is no move. longer in the lead. Yeah. It is a tie between <laughs> Haley and and Mike. Well, actually, it's Matt Trap. <laughs> WTF 101's Professor Foxtrot takes her students to a number of fantastical locations and times, but never on a normal field trip. Likewise, neither did the magic school buses Miss Frizzle, except for one episode in the city where she simply takes the kids to the zoo to teach them about animal life in captivity. Okay, I'm going to I'm going to logic this backwards based on other episodes I've seen. <laughs> Um, actually, she makes them be the animals in captivity. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, you are very correct. Uh, <laughs> wow. Miss Frizzle sense. does take the kids on their first and only quote unquote normal <laughs> field trip in that episode to a zoo, but at the end of the trip, she transforms the kids into zoo animals so they can better understand how those animals live. That's at the end, end of the trip? trip? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it yeah. just does a slow zoom out as they know they're never gonna oh. leave. <laughs> This is your life now. You'll eat hay and you'll live here and you'll shit in the bucket and your family will never see you again. And people will just you stare at you. I mean, that, that, what a weird, harsh, you know, trip to be like, yeah, now you know how it feels. What about you, Frizzle? You're not going to do this either? Well, I bet like, yeah. like, Arnold got some like, uh, he got, he had like some lame, like naked mole rat or something where it was just yeah. like, oh, well, it's like, you have to, yeah. you're fine. you live underground. That's right, like a, Arnold. Go away, Arnold. <laughs> yeah. Stuck in a terrarium in a room, like, what the I mean, I'm so I love that I was able to figure this out without doing, I've written so many episodes of kids animation that I'm like, all right, so what is this? It's what definitely going to be, how do I teach them empathy this time? <laughs> this little monsters. Oh, my gosh. All right, well, let's move on to the next question. A lot of crazy stuff happened in the 1980s. The Chernobyl disaster, the Exxon Valdez spill, the birth of Mike Trapp, etc. And a lot of these current events were reflected in the pages of DC Comics. The Joker worked with Saddam Hussein, Ronald Reagan was targeted for assassination by multiple supervillains, and the New Guardians faced a cocaine-powered evildoer in Colombia named Snowflake. Um, actually, the Joker didn't work with Saddam Hussein. Saddam was... Let's say that it was more of a 90s thing. <laughs> you are correct. But if Zach or Mike can name who we actually worked with, I I'll have it. to give it to them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so we're going to – Trap got there before you. I'm actually – Joker worked with – let's go with Kim Jong-il. <laughs> uh, incorrect. Zach, <laughs> final guess or it goes to Hayden? Um, Actually, the Joker worked with Osama bin Laden. Oh, no. The Joker actually worked with Iran's Ayatollah Khomeini, being made the UN ambassador f from Iran, which offered him diplomatic immunity so that he could not be prosecuted for his crime sprees. I love the idea of a very politically aware yeah. joke. He's like, yeah. I'm all chaos, but I read the newspaper every morning over a cup of coffee just so I can like stay up on the news. <laughs> well, yeah. I am the joker of international treaties. Yeah. You have to know all the rules in order to break them. <laughs> but, I, but I also hope you can see why when Haley got that close, I was like, yep, that's as close as we're going to get. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I would have been blown away if so. It was like, yeah, you know, uh, Iran's Ayatollah Khomeini, you know, so it was on all our minds. Uh, <laughs> Saddam just felt so 90s to me. I don't know. <laughs> no, that was a solid guess, and you really did blow me away. Hey, I always said uh, the Joker worked with, um, like, the penguin. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been the best. Yeah, yeah. Don't oh. have just the penguin. <laughs> yeah, I mean, look, you all hear the penguin, <laughs> the Riddler. Ayatollah Khomeini. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. God. I'm here with the flipper guy. <laughs> the guy with the flippers and the umbrella. Why are we in a sewer? Yeah. 
All right. So this next question is going to be pretty awesome because we got a celebrity guest to uh, send in a question. So, uh, yeah, we have a few celebrities sprinkled throughout this episode because it's a special episode. And uh, so let's kick off the first guest question. Hey, gang, Brendan Mulligan here. Throughout Escape from the Blood Keep, Soap Bar yearns to return to his swamp, perhaps inspired by the dead marshes from J.R.R. Tolkien's Middle Earth, an area of mysterious swampland as old as Mordor itself. Okay, well, hold on. Zach is already buzzing in. I'm actually, Brennan's not a celebrity. No, I, I, <laughs> I don't know what you're my, saying. My, that real, is, that is... my real answer is, I'm actually, it's not a swampland. It's sort of like a weird... Uh, other place, kind of craggy desert place. <laughs> uh, you, you're, you're, cr- you're, cr- you're cr- with, this is another one where y'all are getting real close, but I'm, I'm, I'm I mean, I, I even see, you know, Saltzman is like, you're almost there, but yeah, yeah, we're, we're, we're on the, which means that it's, it's another one that we're going to give territory for someone to come in and give the full correct answer. <laughs> uh, Haley is, is, has buzzed in. Uh, yeah, I'll say, um, actually, uh, the dead marshes are actually long ago, long ago drained by Sauron himself. And so now it's just a bunch of barren desert wasteland. No, I'm not going to give it to you. <laughs> I was convinced. I was like, oh, Haley's got this. That's a good <laughs> no, guess. not at all. I was just bullshitting my wife. <laughs> I, hoped, I hoped a name would come to me, but it didn't. <laughs> if he's delivery of like, no, I don't I don't feel like that. <laughs> I, all right. Um, actually, uh, the dead marshes aren't swampland. Uh, the dead marshes are themselves like composed of like the spirits of the dead. It is like, it's not a like physical uh, 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 terrain oh. as much as it is like a, a like ghostly one. Mm. Oh man, I, it felt like you were getting close to it, but you're still wrong. And I, <laughs> I think I think no one's gonna get it. Zach's gonna get his first point because um, actually, the Dead Marshes were not always swampland, nor even named the Dead Marshes. It was one of the sites of the Battle of Daggerlad, where countless armies died in battle between the last alliance of elves and men and the armies of Mordor. And the glut of decaying corpses there eventually turned it into swampland. How about that? So you were like your spirits thing was in like in the realm, in the but realm. it's yeah, not. No, it. those are whole wow. ass bodies. Not a uh, point from <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's that definitely that, that is human. That is, that is <laughs> body juice that is making the swamp. It's so, the body. Yeah. I bet that's very. One, I'll say, I bet that's very rich for with nutrients for plant growth, and I bet it smells like ass. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, no, I want to say, let the bodies be the juice. <laughs> <laughs> Fun fact. This next question is one of my favorite references in the um actually you know mm. I guess lore uh, uh, design <laughs> uh, 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 theme. Uh, it's a shiny question. This is our first shiny question, uh, and shiny questions for like shiny Pokemon. They're worth the same amount, just a little bit different and a little bit rarer. Or in my case, you'll never see them ever. <laughs> uh, and this one is a uh, list from youngest to oldest, the Von Trapp children. Oh, Dear oh, fuck. God. <laughs> the fuck. All right. The fuck are we doing? Shit. Oh, that's how you know you got a good question. So for this, you're just going to be looking at an image of the Von Trapp children and then doing your best to name them from youngest to oldest. So let's see that image right now. All right, Trap, you're the first to buzz in, so go ahead. Do your your best. Uh, Goodness. I'm going to say, I'm going to say Gretel. I'm going to say Kurt. I'm going to say Louisa. I'm going to say Brigitta. I'm going to say Friedrich. I'm going to say Marta. (laughs) And I'm going to say, and then I'm going to cap it off with Liesel. You 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 were so close yet so far. There are some uh, you got in solid order, and some you were 
all over the place. Yeah. I do want to note that those, I believe, were all the correct names, though. Oh, yeah, you did really? get all the names. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah. Fucking insane. Oh, yeah, that's, well, that now I've, now I've, right. handica- I've given everyone a, a solid handicap now. <laughs> well, fucking- you overestimate how much I was listening. Yeah. <laughs> Fair. Zach, you buzzed in second, so you can go next. Okay. Um, yeah, for sure. The Von, Tra- the Von Trapp children. Uh, we'll start off with uh, Lisa Von Trapp, uh, clearly the youngest. And then after that, it's Dieter Von Trapp. Uh, I think that's Kelsey Von Trapp after that. And then uh, Sharon Von Trapp, uh, Duncan Von Trapp. And then we're ending, of course, with um, uh, Deborah Von Trapp. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm going to just say just uh, that you've won the award of most wrong. Uh, Can I ask why? uh, I think you've only named one child. (laughs) Okay. All right. Okay. uh, Liesl is the youngest. I remember that. She cut cut her finger and she was like, I have boo-boo. Then it's going to be Peter there. (laughs) (laughs) Young, young Peter. Uh, And then Brigitte or something like that. (laughs) Uh, Brigitte, Brigitte, uh, Brigitte. Then there's Carla. There's Car- Carl. <laughs> uh, then there's good old Tammy. <laughs> and, uh, and finally, uh, Diesel is the oldest. <laughs> Diesel. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh man. Yeah. Uh, you said, uh, as we all know, Mike won this. Uh, not only. <laughs> Not only naming all the children accurately, but also you got pretty close. Let's just show the image. Oh, so I got I, I got Gretel and Liesel right, but everything in the middle is just all mixed up. Is that the, is that the, the yeah the- yeah? But you got Kurt and Louisa in the huh. right order. That all Kurt right. Was, I would have uh, for sure before. guessed three was older than four. Well, good on you for remembering all those Von Trapp children. Was that because it, you're a trap? Is that? I mean, it, it might not surprise you to learn that uh, my mom is very fond of, of the movie. And yeah. then I've seen it at least a couple times. And I do have in my brain, like, the scene where, like, the kids are introducing themselves and, like, just stomping forward. And it's like, Brigitte, Louisa. <laughs> you know, like, there are a couple of those in there that I was like, all right, I do remember the the, like, the rhythm of this. Whenever I see clips of The Sound of Music, I just like, when I try to think back of any of the times I've like almost watched part of it, it's just me as a little kid being like, why the fuck are we watching this? Yes, always. <laughs> like, what the fuck is this? It's Watch always on around else. the holidays or something. Yeah, it's like, here's, it's like, it's like, yeah, weirdly marks a time of year the same way like the Ten Commandments does. And you're like, yeah. all right, here it is. <laughs> also, I find it so strange that it's become a holiday movie because there's absolutely nothing in there that's like, it's Christmas time. Like, there's zero holiday related in that movie well you know it just oh. yeah it's just one of those things and uh you know what may be surprising to you the wadi way household uh never watched the sound of music <laughs> uh they okay. were they, you know okay. they not into it at all <laughs> <laughs> all right y'all well looks like it's time for another one of our celebrity guest questions Ooh. uh someone tuning in from uh you know mike's life uh to uh Give him a little slice. So let's check it out. Again, not a celebrity. <laughs> hey gang, Brendan Mulligan here. Remember 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea? It's a book about traveling leagues under the sea. And leagues is of course a measurement of distance and not depth. The implication that you even would <laughs> measure depth in leagues is so absurd that hopefully someone would correct anyone this foolish. Anyways, narrator Captain Nemo reveals that the Nautilus is powered by sodium mercury batteries. Oh, um, actually. trap, trap Fuck. buzzed in immediately. Fuck. Wow, wow, wow. Immediately. Um, actually, the narrator is not Captain Nemo. The narrator is Professor Aranax or something like that. And that Captain is... Nemo is the the antagonist of the book, if anything. That is the uh, that is extremely correct. Uh, you, you nailed it and knocked it out the park. Um, actually, Captain Nemo is not the narrator. Professor Aranax is so. You know. I'm so glad that you went first because my answer was so wrong. <laughs> <laughs> me too. Me what too. Was, what was? What, I, now I'll I say have it. To hear okay. It. What was it? I was gonna. I was on the exact right track, but I was gonna go. This is what. This is me thinking I'm right. Okay. Um. Actually, the narrator was not Captain Nemo. It was Ishmael. <laughs> <laughs> By pure just happenstance, I actually 
just read 20,000 Leagues for the first time um, like a month ago, maybe, because um, I've been trapped inside. And I was like, I should read some of these old sci-fi classics. And I feel like some sometimes they really hold up and sometimes not so much. And then I was like, well, let me, it's like, let me give this a go. It's I can get it for free at the library. Did, this is fun. Did it hold up? No. <laughs> if you want my honest opinion, uh, both reading this and reading Dracula, which Dracula I do think holds up. Dracula is very good. The description of, uh, of of Dracula in the book is so different from the descript- from what you see him as. In the book, he's described as having a giant bushy mustache. Yeah. <laughs> it's like what? Uh, and Captain Nemo, I feel like, has been whitewashed a lot because in the book it, they specifically call out that he's like like you don't know where exactly he's from. But the narrator is like, I think he's from India. He could be from the Middle East. I think he's in League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. Yeah. Yes. There are definitely a couple, but there's been some where it's like, ah, Sean Connery, you'll be Captain Nemo. It's yeah, like, yeah. Oh, no, yeah. no, man. Sean Connery yeah. is waiting to be impressed. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, that point will go to Mike Trapp, which means that now Mike and Haley are tied for three, and Zach is sitting last with one. Uh, and no. clear, one of Haley's points is for clarifying that my name is not Matt. That is correct. Uh, correct. Right. So if, if I wouldn't have right. given her that free point, you would be in the lead. But unfortunately, Perfect. because of that, you are tied. <laughs> Next question. Ask Mike Trapp. Hosting a game show is no easy gig. But while Art Fleming was the original host of Jeopardy, Alex Trebek has been the only person to host the popular syndicated game show since he took over in 1984. All right, Trap buzzed in first. Um, actually, there's been some other host other than Alex Trebek at some point in the show's history. And you're going to ask me to be more specific, but I'm going to hold off right there. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay, so you're going to do uh, what is often called uh, the iffy. And uh, <laughs> just, just enough answer to challenge uh, your, your other <laughs> contestants to get it uh, exactly correct. Yeah. Smart move. Uh, Zach was next on the buzz. Uh, I would also call that a Zach as well. Not <laughs> uh, but, um, actually... I believe that Alex Trebek definitely had some other hosts come in at some point, and I believe one of them, and this is purely a guess because I don't watch uh, Jeopardy because it makes me feel stupid, uh, <laughs> Ken Jennings. Uh, incorrect. Interesting. By the way, Zach, I was my brain was going there too. But I was. Oh, I was. I know room. what it is. <laughs> well, um, actually, the host that took over. For Trebek for a little while, uh, it was Pat Sajak. He stopped over for Wheel of Fortune. <laughs> he stopped oh over for Wheel of Fortune. You once again accidentally getting the correct answer. Yes! Pat Sajak did host one episode in 1997 as part of uh, as part of an <laughs> April Fool's joke where he and Trebek switch shows. Oh, wow. what a fool we were. You know, this came back to bite me in the ass because that would have been my guess if I was going to pull out a bullshit guess. But I was oh. like, no one else knows. I'm fine. Oh, <laughs> wow. Can it be you are wrong? Somebody else likes the six o'clock block of television. God damn it. Yes. Oh. That was my favorite thing about Mike doing that is this is something you can just accidentally guess. So I, was, I thought Zach was going to get it. And Ken Jennings is actually a really good guess and my guess for who might be the successor. Yeah. Let's move on to the next question. Uh, you know, I'm hoping uh, Zach will be able to snag this one. I'm rooting for you, Zach. Thank you. <laughs> Troopers switch things around so that we got a sense of life in an evil space empire from the point of view of a regular trooper. And in 2015, The Force Awakens gave us our first official Star Wars story told from the perspective of a stormtrooper in John Boyega's oh. Finn. Um, um, actually, the general public doesn't care. <laughs> oh so, I know I'm not going to get this one. So, that's for all you Star Wars fans. I will never post my home address. <laughs> <laughs> Pure chaos energy from Haley. Just trolling everyone. All right. Now, see, now I'm hesitant about pulling an iffy, even though I'm <laughs> tempted to. But what I want to say is that, um, actually... This isn't the first time we get a story from a stormtrooper's perspective. I'm going to get a little bit more specific, and I'm going to say that I think the first time we get uh, a a stormtrooper specific story is in a comic book. Yes, that is a deft iffy that you've pulled, and by getting that specific 
forces your contestants to guess the name of the comic book that this is to steal it from you. Um, actually, it's from the comic book Star Wars Ayatollah Years. <laughs> uh, incorrect. <laughs> Do I read Star Wars comic books? Not at all. Do I know the names of any? <laughs> Not really sure. Um, actually, the comic book Shadows of the Empire. Uh, no, I like how you took Shadows of Mordor and you switched <laughs> switched it up. Seems uh, like but, it's something. <laughs> uh, so the first official Star Wars story from the perspective of a stormtrooper was the Dark Horse comic series Tag and Bink Are Dead, a semi-parody <laughs> series akin to Rosencrantz and Guildenstern Are Dead, wherein the readers follow two bumbling stormtroopers as they inadvertently influence and witness major events in the original Star Wars trilogy. In my head, it was Shadows of the Empire or Tag and burn or dead. <laughs> <laughs> it's time for y'all to experience something I will uh, never experience in Pokemon. That means it's our next shiny question of the game. And in this one, you will be telling us which of these Michaels aren't really named Michael. In this game, you're going to be guessing which famous Michael is not actually named Michael. So get your hands <laughs> on your buzzer ready, because once we show it on the screen, you have a chance to buzz in and guess. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. All uh, right, Trap. I then Haley and then Zach can guess after. Trap, who is your guess? I want to say that... Michael J. Fox is not actually a Michael. Uh, that is incorrect. Haley. I'm going to say Michael Jordan is, is, is he spelled it, he spelled it Michael because <laughs> that is, that's how I spelled it when I was a kid. <laughs> that is also incorrect. So Zach, oh. Go ahead and give us your guess. <laughs> the guy that I'm looking at, I forget his last name, not usually, but right now. If I remember, uh, but Zach doesn't, can I get the point? <laughs> yeah. We're talking uh, the guy who was Batman, Birdman. Michael Keaton is wrong. Michael Keaton okay. is what I was going to say. Yeah, yeah. All right. Trap? Yeah. Back in it. I'm going to go with Michael Douglas. Michael Douglas is wrong. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> All right, Haley? Okay, uh, we'll go with... Hold on, hold on real quick. If you get this wrong, Zach has no choice but to get the, the right <laughs> yes, answer. I might be setting so, him up. So, so, yeah, so just just so you know. I'm going to say Michael B. Jordan. <laughs> that is incorrect. <laughs> I'm going to say Michael Caine. I'm actually you are Michael correct. Caine. Yes! yes! Michael Caine's real yes. name is Maurice. <laughs> Maurice? Hey, Zach really right. getting that one through... Uh, <laughs> Through being slow on the buzzer, really the only, one I, the only one I was certain about was Michael B. Jordan. It's like if there's already a famous Michael Jordan, and your name isn't already if you if his name was like Jonathan Jordan, it, it, you'd be insane to be like yeah. maybe Michael. I mean, yeah, that that is a good point to point out for those who don't know in the industry. The reason Michael B. Jordan is Michael B. Jordan is because in SAG you cannot have the same name as uh, another SAG member, so he had to add the B or choose a different name, which I would said, if for any weird reason there was gonna be another iffy waddy way, I was gonna be Ian Norway, which sounds <laughs> like the name of a porn star now that I say it out loud. <laughs> yeah. You know, sometimes you get the point when you're just better than the rest. Yeah. 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 That was one yeah. of these. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll keep, we'll keep it going, we'll keep it going. As breaking news proves, reading things off a teleprompter isn't always easy. Just ask resident Simpsons News anchor Kent Brockman, who could not pronounce Kuala Lumpur, so changed a news story to read that a major tidal wave had hit Kuala Land, also known as Australia, instead. Ooh, Trap, your guess? I'm going to say, um, actually, uh... Uh, Koala Land. He does say Koala Land, but Koala Land is not Australia. Koala Land is is something else. Uh, that is incorrect. Yeah. All right. Zach. Zach, what's your guess? I buzzed in without anything, so I'm going to say that Koala Land uh, didn't have a tidal wave. Uh, that is incorrect as well. Uh, uh, um, actually, he didn't change it to Koala Land. He changed it to Cool Land. <laughs> oh man, uh, incorrect. The correct answer was he actually replaced Kuala Lumpur with France. He didn't say 
<laughs> that's, that's all it was. He just oh. said France. Yeah, so uh, no one gets a point on that one. Uh, Fine. Uh, uh, what what episode was this from? Yeah. Uh, well, I'll let Saltzman answer that one. No, if you have <laughs> <laughs> I believe the episode is Bart Gets Famous. As I'm not going to do this without my Danish, right? <laughs> I believe that is correct, yes. Well, there I feel is. bad about myself. Well, you know, well, you got the Danish part right, so you can always have that. You got the Danish part. I'd say that's actually more specifically pulling a Haley on um, actually, is that there's many Simpsons questions where I couldn't remember the answer, but I described the episode around the part. (laughs) Here's every other detail except for the one that you need. But I do know this stuff. (laughs) All right. Well, uh, since that point goes to no one, uh, that means Haley and Mike are tied for four points. And Zach bringing in the rear with two, but still in the game as we have, uh, yeah, enough for you to come back. Uh, (laughs) Yeah, uh, you'd have to get all 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 of these next ones right. though. Uh, Okay. Okay. Mike Trapp infamously attempted to murder Pat Castles in the world of Hardly Working, sending Pat on a journey of revenge, much like John Wick's journey of vengeance, all kicked off by the murder of an unnamed puppy gifted to him by his deceased wife. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, Haley. Um, yes? Actually, that puppy has a name. Had a name? That puppy had been named. And the name was? Well, the name <laughs> was... <laughs> I think I'll just uh, pull an iffy on this. <laughs> see, see All right, you know that. what that means. If you're pulling an iffy, that means Zach, Mike, you have to guess the name of the puppy gifted to him by his deceased wife. This feels bad because I was going to also pull an iffy <laughs> and do this exact thing and say that exact thing. Now here I am on the other end of the iffy stick. And, <laughs> and uh, all right, I'm going to say, um, actually, the dog's name is Mercy. Uh, this would be like within like sort of like being yeah. ironic. And, yeah. Yeah. That that would be tight, but that is incorrect. <laughs> uh, Zach, would you like to guess? You know, my guess is going a different direction because <laughs> I'm going to say I'm um, actually Pat trying to kill Trap is not like John Wick. It's like Kill Bill. <laughs> that, 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 all of the things we did were Kill Bill esque, not not like John Wick. Okay, so I'll just take that as you giving it up. Um, actually, the dog's name is, um, I don't know, Rufus. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> it's unfortunate that you and Mike got it wrong because this is a completely guessable name. Uh, but unfortunately, that's Haley's bag. The puppy was named, it was named Daisy by John's deceased wife, Helen. The pit uh. company's John Wick for the remainder of the series is, however, unnamed. Look, <laughs> Zach, you can also get these next ones right and make sure that Haley takes the dub home uh, and not not Mike. Who knows? There might be an opportunity for extra points somewhere around here. Like, for example, uh, since we're doing our last shiny question of the game, uh, mm. and we know shiny questions like shiny Pokemon are worth the same amount, just a little bit different, but a little bit rarer when Mike runs the game. But since this is the last shiny question, I can say that it means two points. If that got it correctly, would still be in the running to win. All right, so it's time for a game we all know and love called Needs More Pixels. Now, uh, because we know and love it, you know it's a game that's a very pixelated image that uh, gradually depixelates, but you only get one guess to get it right. So you can take your guess early on to, you know, have your first shot at it, or you can pass. And then as you pass, you know, you you, you get a better chance, but you also risk people also getting a chance to guess it. This is a, you know, this is a a crazy one because two (laughs) points are on the line, but this also is one where no one can get the two points at all. Mm. Mm. Let's see these images. Hmm. Oh, mm. Zach, do you, do, do, are you going to take a guess? Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what's, 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 what's the guess? I think these are headshots of college humor cast members. You, you, you got to be more specific. I'm sorry. I, I, I think, I've, okay. Uh, one is Teo. You're incorrect. Uh, okay. <laughs> okay. So, so Trap is now guessing. Oh no! This is this is crazy to uh, to buzz in this early. 
but I'm going to say these are both pictures of me. Oh, you are also incorrect. Ah. So, oh, no. Uh, let's get one more level of depixelation. Great. I'm so bad with names, too. Oh, oh I know these King's Quest characters. Uh, let's see here. Okay. I'm going to say that these are indeed two college humor cast member hedge. Oh, no, wait. Ah, okay. The one on the left is me. And okay. then the one in the middle is Zach. The middle? You are I mean, correct. the one in the, the yeah, right. Yeah, the yeah, one I was on the right, right. sorry. With the middle, but you are correct. This is, <laughs> these are headshots. Uh, <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Fuck. Can I just see, like, two pixelated levels back? I want to see, like, the 8-bit versions of, yeah. yeah see, like, Atari version. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah look at that. I would have gotten that, uh, for sure, yeah. You know, I had to just jump in, because, look, we're not doing great in last place, and I was just hoping waited. that... That was the Hail thing, Zach, is you could have waited for some depixelation. <laughs> and I, and I, back, like, I had to go for it. I had, like, to, I had to send it. I thought it was too easy when I first saw it, because I've been staring at both of you at the same time, same hair color, <laughs> but yes... Haley is now in the lead with seven points. It's very funny that I voted. I I thought it was just two pictures of me, and the <laughs> it was the exact opposite, which is that the other two people who are not here. Yeah, yeah you were so close mm. too, Mike. Oh my gosh. Yeah, this is trap. What does it say about you? I guess. Uh, yeah. well, this uh, brings us to our very last question, which is always concerning real life skills. <laughs> You don't want your home to become a death trap of mm. carbon monoxide poisoning, yeah. which is why everyone should have a carbon monoxide detector on each floor of their home. And if your detector has replaceable batteries, try to replace the batteries at least once a year. Oh, that's that's trap. Okay. Uh, Fuck. Um, actually, uh, I think you need uh, more than just one per floor. Uh, incorrect. All right, fine. Uh, Zach, you were next up. Hmm, seems a little like something I was going to say, but if I had to <laughs> buy some time and sort of slowly keep talking as I continue to think about what a carbon monoxide detector <laughs> would do at a house and where the discrepancy in the question might be, I, you need one. Um, uh, you need one in every area that has. Uh, you need. Uh, you, I don't know. <laughs> All right, now it's you, Haley. What is the? What is your? Guess? You need one in uh in every sleeping area of your house, and you need it at about like uh, midway up because of the density of the gas. Oh, those are great facts, but not what the correction we were looking for. God damn it! I'm gonna say. Um, actually, carbon monoxide detectors are hardwired into your home uh, because it's so important that uh, there are no batteries in there. Uh, incorrect. <laughs> um, actually, carbon monoxide, as we know, is the silent killer. In our homes, we are struck down if it... <laughs> uh, I think, uh, batteries-wise, you have mm -hmm. to replace them... Uh, every six months boom there it is exactly. and you have to I'm replace your detector every five years as yeah. well well that's not in there but you should be replacing <laughs> the batteries once every six months you got it correct zach so that gives us a final score of zach with three mike holding it down with four and Haley taking us home with seven points, making her the winner. Mm. Oh my gosh, what a big oh, game. No. Uh, it's, it, I mean, really, it was like there was a force no. right behind you, Haley. Thank you so much for joining me today, everyone. And that's it for this episode. Thank you so much for watching. And if you want some more pedantic corrections, then keep watching Um Actually and other episodes where Trap takes his title back as host of the show. <laughs> for some reason, I was waiting for music to play, but I... <laughs>